Hi again, everyone. I'm Ollie Matthews. This is the Narcissistic Resistance, and this Resistance video is sponsored by contribution from Treasure Travel, and here is her story. The NPB, the NPD mom giveth, and the NPD mom taketh away, don't they all? Although my mom was able to pull a lot of covert shit on us as naive and needy little children, she lost her control over us as we matured, and this incensed her. I am certain this is a major reason why she escalated her narcissistic behavior dramatically as she aged. She even evolved new techniques, which she thought were clever to try to get her adult offspring back in line. As outlined in my previous letter titled In Context, even as young as eight, I began to realize that my mother's intentions were pathologically driven by her need to quench her own children's happiness quenching our happiness and keeping our emotions on a hair trigger is what i mean by keeping us in line in context describes an incident in which my mother destroyed the teddy bear she had given me given the power differential a parent can easily take away from their child in the name of discipline or just to be cruel npd parents like to use the takeaway power play to a sadistic extreme and many absurdly try to play that game with their adult children boy do they you recently read a story about a woman who described how her mother comes into her home and puts her favorite things in the trash can video titled don't turn your back on the narcissist your advice don't let this woman in your house my mom was more subtle and employed ways to trash my things without physically putting them in the trash bin. She would accidentally ruin cookware and break glass in my kitchen. Once she caused the dishwasher to flood the floor because of an honest mistake. But given her M.O., very suspicious. Yep. And if you call her on it, then you're attacking your mother. So they know what they're doing. For things that could not be accidentally ruined in trash, she would trash talk them in an attempt to devalue them. She always trash talked my homes over the years, always pointing out flaws and always in the guise of merely discussing how they don't make things like they used to. She did not want me to be happy with my homes and the nicer the home, the more the criticism. Even criticized me a couple years after I bought my first house for not waiting to buy since prices have come down. Seriously, as if I should have been able to predict the market. No matter what it is, they're going to find something. And the nicer it is, the more they're going to bitch about it. Look, you, you got you to use the narcissist. You got to use the narcissist bitching for what it is. It's a barometer. It's a barometer of how much your success is caught is is firing up is firing up the the narcissist shit storm and that's what it is it's a shit storm that's just brewing in their heads and their bitching is the is, is there it's the barometer and the more the bitching the higher the millibars and the bigger the shit storm it's gonna cause that's all it is with respect to gift giving my mother evolved a variation on, this, on standard narcissistic mother gift-giving abuse. We already discussed standard narcissist gift-giving abuse in your video entitled The Narcissist Ruins Everyone's Relationship with Everyone. I saw right through my mom's new covert strategy at age 28, gave her new technique a name. The Lord Mom have not yet giveth, but the Lord Mom taketh away. Yet this technique... My mom could do a, th a theoretical parent-child takeaway with little effort without spending a dime. Yeah, it's well, or what I call the carrot again. It's another carrot at the end of the stick. You're never gonna get it. So, so it's the same as thing as what you're saying. It's you know, it's taking away what you never had. It's chasing the carrot on the stick. My first awareness of this technique was in my late 20s when my mother started a trend of innocently asking me what I wanted for my birthday. I would suggest something small and cheap. My mother would then launch into a ramp. Don't you already have that already? Why didn't you take care of the one you had? Why wouldn't you want why would you want that? 
I'm not getting you that. I learned not to play this game and just to answer nothing. I don't want anything for my birthday, but thank you. Yeah, it's the same game I would play. Because not only do you have to come up with a gift, you have to justify your gift. <laughs> what you want as a child. And there is no justifying it. And you know you're only going to be told no or be disappointed anyway. So you just stop asking or you ask for things you don't really want and don't really care about just so you don't have to be fucking disappointed. Because you learn very early on, even though you can't recognize what's going on, okay, why you don't ask for anything you really want. Why you don't even know what you really want. Because you learned very early on that you have to justify your toys your gifts, what you like. And then that's going to be analyzed. And then now, well, why do you think that? Why do you like that? Well, don't you think it's weird about this or that? And like, we know the game. And then you're right down the fucking rabbit hole. Oh shit, I'm in the rabbit hole. So what you did by and what I did, you, avoid, you were avoiding the rabbit hole. And you didn't even realize it by just saying nothing. Because by just saying nothing, then she can get you whatever she wants to get anyway, which is what's going to fucking happen, and you save yourself the fucking trial down the rabbit hole. Hope that makes sense. She played this same type of game before Christmas with respect to her getting gifts from my kids. I heard many, many, many times leading up to Christmas, quote, we don't know what to get your kids because they already have everything, said in a shitty sing-song tone. I was going to get them blank, but they already have everything. It's the same game that she used to play on you that she's playing on your children. She's dangling the fucking carrot at the end of the stick. The suggesting of gifts and then in the same conversation making sure I understood that we would not get them because we did not deserve them was the most basic version of her new gaslighting tactic. It became less subtle, more obsessive, and more aggressive over the years with my mom using her stained glass creations as bait, as her bait, so to speak. My mom visited me, my husband, and our toddler daughter in our new home some 20 years ago. On that visit, she said she wanted to make a stained glass panel to put over the side light window of our, of our front door. I was very appreciative, and I told her so. But on that last day of her visit, she announced in a rage she would not make it because I did not deserve it. <sighs> this is what they always did. My mother did the same thing to me with a, when I was a kid. I was into um, the Continental Army. I loved it. I was obsessed with it. Like I loved their uniforms. And I wanted like a, a Continental Army coat. Like I saw one on a kid and my mother said I can make that like it was for sale and I knew she could her and my grandmother could she's like I can definitely make you that I'm like okay and then I wanted it and like she would talked it all up and we're gonna get to like and then it was something like oh no you did this so now you don't get it I, I understand <laughs> that's what they do that's just what they do and it doesn't matter what, what, there is no violation big, it's too small. They're looking for something. It's a game. And until you cut it off and cut them off completely, they're not going to change. What set her off was that I innocently said that I would have a plexiglass rectangle custom cut to cover the panel so that my toddler would not be able to touch the, the lead lines and get lead poisoning. She shouted at me that I was ridiculous and too obsessed about my child as she dramatically tore up the diagram she had drawn. She said, and I quote, if you're so damn worried about lead, then don't have stained glass in your house. End quote. You just missed out on a very beautiful and expensive panel. She derived satisfaction in taking the gift from me, even though it had not been given yet. And you should have been like, well, you could take yourself on out too then. Bye happens over and over again this is just this is what they do 
She said she wanted to make my sister a large panel for her new condo. My sister told my mother, no, please don't go to so much work. But my mother insisted that my sister pick the colors and motif. My sister came home one day shocked to find that my parents had entered her condo and hung a glass work in a location of their choice. My sister phoned me very upset. It was my mom's earliest large panel made nine years prior and whose color and motif was 180 degrees opposite that of my sister's choices. I called this the bait and switch variation of my mom's not yet giveth strategy. Had my sister said anything other than thank you, my mother would have launched into a rage accusing me of accusing her of being ungrateful. For sure my mom was hoping for that drama. What my mother would do, and it's the same thing, yeah, the bait and switch. You tell them what you want when you do, and this is what I'm trying to tell you here. Okay, this is my point early on, to go back to my point earlier on. Why you stop telling them what you actually want. Because when you do tell them what you actually want, they're going to do the opposite. And they're going to do the opposite to see if A, you're going to eat it and just take it and get their narcissistic supply and control. Or B, what my mother would do, which the opposite of what you were, my mother wouldn't flip into a rage. My mother would sit there and bawl her eyes out. <laughs> and look what you did here, like your mother. Like, and then you got to deal with that phoniness. Like my father's mad that my mother's crying. And like, like you could give a shit about her. But no, you're going to jump on the fucking party train of abuse. So that's what you want to try to avoid when you start saying, I want nothing is this whole scenario because she's in the fucking rabbit hole. She entered that rabbit hole the second she started giving her a motif and colors that she wanted. Fuck it, it's too late. Now you're in the rabbit hole. And now you're stuck here. Like I either got to admit it and stay stuck in this fucking rabbit hole and look at this piece, which was the opposite of what I said and she's doing it on purpose. Or B, I got to go... I got to have a fight down in the rabbit hole, which is only going to drag me down deeper into it as I have to deal with her fucking rage and whatever else is going to come out. So we learn to just say nothing. What do you want? Nothing. To avoid the rabbit hole. And we were avoiding the narcissist rabbit hole before we even realized it. To put this in perspective, my mother was a talented artist, always had a project in the works, and had the money to freely indulge in her craft. Although her exquisite stuff adorns her home and she has given exquisite panels to a few acquaintances, me and my sister only ever received a few of her early elementary works, which we appreciated and thanked her, and then had to hear for years that we did not appreciate them. And my mother is a stained glass artist as well. A real good one too. Someone who sold, made a lot of money on her pieces, had all her floors redone, spiral staircase, you know, like even worked out some serious trade with other tradespeople for her work. And I was married to my, I was, I was married to my ex-wife. I was with my ex-wife for 14 years. Lived with her most of that time. You know how many pieces of stained glass or panels I receive from my mother or offers? And it's probably better off that way. My mother also had a number of exquisite stained glass composition stored in her closet for lack of space to hang in her own home. The fact is I would have it would have been easy for my mom to make my sister a beautiful custom panel. Instead, my mom started yet another project that would end up in her closet because it was too exquisite to give to her daughter. Yeah, they hoard all the good stuff. You're not good enough for it. you're not good enough. And that's what they're basically telling you by all this. They're always it's it's just it's just a nonstop message of you're not good enough. That's all any of this is. 
And that's us avoiding it as well. Avoid being told we're not good enough. Avoid going down that rabbit hole. That's the whole point of the rabbit hole. The whole point of the narcissist rabbit hole is to let you know you're not good enough. There are at least a dozen other examples of this behavior that I remember. I understand that the above examples are of small stuff and petty when discussed out of context of the whole picture. However, the relentless, small, passive-aggressive stuff creates a background noise of negativity in the relationship that eats away at one's self-esteem. Despite my adult awareness of my mom's intentions and despite my determination not to be rattled, the fact is that when one's own mother is always scheming, jabbing, and gaslighting you, it fucking hurts. Anyway, this childish and relentless gaslighting and attempted gaslighting has been exhausting and damaging part of my childhood and adulthood. Not because I lost my teddy bear or glass panel that I never had, had but because I had a mother who was very disrespectful of me. Yeah. No respect. The narcissist will never respect you. <laughs> I mean, that's the whole point. That's the whole point of telling you you're not good enough and you never will be. I am no contact and I do mourn the loss. That is the loss for the emotionally mature and nurturing mother I never had. You can't make this shit up, treasure travel. <clears throat> you know, there's a lot going on in this one. A lot you know when they're criticizing look when they're criticizing what you already have that's their shit barometer that's how you know the shit storm that's going on is inside their head is high their narcissistic shit storm is raging Telling them you want you learned very early on, as I did, as a lot of us do. Okay, to avoid their rabbit hole. And you didn't even realize it by telling them, I want nothing. Because then you can't disappoint me. Then I don't have to defend why I want it. You can't drag me down that fucking rabbit hole in, of trial. And I don't give you the opportunity to disappoint me, which is really just going to be turned into me disappointing you and me being ungrateful and then turning it back into you, whether you rage out or cry hysterically and make it about you. You'll hold everybody hostage at the bottom of that rabbit hole. Everybody's held hostage at the bottom of the rabbit hole. So we learned to avoid it and we didn't even realize we were doing it at the time. It takes no contact for the, for the fog to clear and to get some clarity and to start connecting dots and making sense out of all of this because it's muck. Okay, you're not, you're not going to survive at the bottom of the rabbit hole. You're just not. So you have to avoid it. So... Thank you again, Treasure Travel, for another contribution and story. I really appreciate it. Thank you to everybody watching. Please leave any opinions or advice in the comments section below. And again, if you want your story read on the channel, you have a topic you'd like me to cover, a narcissist you'd like to expose, you'd like to set up Skype, a phone call, have a private video made, or a Facebook live chat, or you'd like to sponsor a video like this for someone who needs help and can't afford it, or just make a contribution to the channel in general to keep it successful, growing, and expanding because this channel survives 100% on contributions from all of you. Without you guys, all this goes away. So if you like what you see here and you want to see more videos like this, you know what to do with the PayPal and email links in the description box. Also, please like and share this video wherever you can. Subscribe to my channel if you haven't, and be sure to click the subscription bell to be notified of all my video uploads. I'm Ollie Matthews. This has been The Narcissistic Resistance. Take care.